What's going on, everyone? My name is Renox, and I'm here to help you get better at Valorant. I hear you, you're already pretty solid, but have you ever wanted to get to Diamond? We can help. Now, as a member of Cloud9's Training Grounds coaching team, I'll be walking you through everything you need to know to get good at Riot Games' tactical shooter. This is Class in Session. Class in Session is all about teamwork, so we need to have a team to work out with. So let's meet the squad that we'll be taking into matchmaking. Rolling the drill. Hi, I'm Chris. My current rank is Silver 1, and I hope to hit Plat 3. Hi, I'm Natalie. My current rank is Gold, and after this session, I hope to hit Diamond. Hi, my name is Edward. My current rank is Gold, and after this, I hope to be Diamond. Hi, my name is Chris, and my current rank is Gold 3, and I want to be Diamond 1. Hi, my name is Courtney. My current rank is Plat 1, and after this, I wish to reach Diamond 3. Shooting or blowing up enemies is cool and all, but we need to get you to the point where that can happen. So let's talk about maps and how to move around them in a way that won't get you killed. Let's start with the basic movements. I know you all know how to press W, A, S, and D, but here's the thing, you have to press them in the right order. So counter strafing. You know that accuracy drops while you're moving, so it's almost always advantageous to be in a standing position before you shoot. There's also a period of time after you let go of the movement key where you are still slowing down and not at a complete stop. Well, how do you deal with that movement? Well, counter strafing deals with that issue easily. Let's say you're moving to the right and you let go of that key and tap your left movement key at that exact same moment. You'll come to a full stop much faster than just letting go of that left key by counter strafing. You'll also be able to squeeze off a much more accurate shot than you would if someone weren't going to counter strafe. But if you're just looking to gather some info as to what's around the corner, jiggle peeking is for you. Usually, you'll pull out your knife and rapidly move left and right around a corner while avoiding the risk of a full peek. Obviously, you can swing out a little further than you need to if you have to get a view, but be aware of how much of a risk that is and make sure you have a plan on how to get out of that situation. Deciding on where to make your push is vital, but often when you're looking to make a push, you're going to get stuck on one of the many choke points Valorant maps have to offer. Think B main on split, A short on bind, B long on icebox, or basically anywhere that you would have to push through to get onto a site. If you're on attack, you wanna get through these choke points as quickly as possible. Get stuck and the defenders will likely catch you out as they rotate to defend. On defense, it's your job to trap them in these choke points and provide enough time for your teammates to make their way over. Plus. If you're on defense and you see the attacking team investing a lot of abilities or utility into controlling that choke point, that's a pretty good sign that they might be trying to push that site. I mean, why else would they put themselves in such a risk? So, invest your traps and slowing abilities around those locations to give your team enough time to actually respond to those situations. That ability to buy time against a hard push is vital for victory on defense. But if teams aren't immediately pushing a choke point, how can you tell where they're coming from? Well, it's pretty simple. Look out for those key abilities. If Reyna is throwing out her Leer or Sova tosses his Al drone, that's a solid indication on what could be happening at that site. Call out for your teammates and prepare to defend. If they've continued to find success pushing a point, they're likely to keep going there. So throw some more of those resources towards that side of the map. If they're failing, they're probably gonna switch it up sooner rather than later. So be prepared to cut off rotations or even rotate to another site quickly. As soon as you recognize patterns of attack, respond in a way that's actually effective. If Sage is throwing out her slow orb on every push, respond in a way that can actually make use of that slow orb. All of these things are pretty situational, but there is one golden rule to keep track of all the different things inside of Valorant. The spike is king. If you're not sure where you should be going at any given point during the match, the best option is almost always to be getting closer to the spike. If you have a buddy system with the player who has the spike and even if they go down, it makes it almost impossible for the spike to actually go down in a bad situation. You can even leave the spike at a safe location for a while, right up until the point where you want to commit. If you're not sure where you need to be at any given time, try to get closer to the spike. If you're making a risky move, you can leave the spike at a safe location for a bit, right up until the point where you're actually ready to commit. You just don't want to end up dying and dropping the spike in a location where your teammates won't be able to retreat. Once you've planted the spike, don't wander off. Hold your angles. Do those little jiggle peeks if absolutely necessary, but just don't go chasing kills. 
All you need to do is hold down that exact location and make sure that no enemies can attack it. As defenders, the opposite also holds true. Did you take out the spike carrier? Well, don't go wandering around the rest of the map. Hold that spot and make sure the attackers can't recover it. If you notice that you're on the other side of the map and the spike goes down, make sure that you get away from whatever you're doing and make your way over to where the spike is. Don't worry too much about that kill that you missed out on. Trust me, they'll be there to fight for the spike soon enough. Got it? Let's put that into practice. For our first game today, we're gonna to be hopping into a custom game on Ascent. I want you to practice on working on your counter strafing and your jiggle peeking while we move through this map. All right, let's get into it. So first stage wall goes down on the corner, jiggle peek it a little bit, either with your knife out or with the gun, and then go for a counter strafe and try to hit your first shots on this target up here, which I will now place it. Cool, whenever you are ready, Sova, go ahead, jiggle peek to get the info and then counter strafe for the kill. So try to make sure that you guys are pulling out your knives when you're going for those jiggle peaks. So you guys have learned about the basics of counter strafing, but before we continue, I wanna quickly talk about some advanced counter strafing and why it can be so effective. So real quick, we're gonna hop into the game here, as you guys can see, and while you're counter strafing so far, what you guys have been doing is, for example, holding your left key and then tapping your right movement key to stop, and you are coming to a complete stop and then taking your shots. And as you are transitioning from moving left to right, you're gonna be able to get one accurate shot off in between that movement. So as you're learning counter strafing and as you're learning this more advanced technique, you'll be able to take out enemies in a way where it looks like you haven't even stopped moving and you just one-tap them in the head. For the second drill, we're going to be hopping onto Haven and we're going to have three attackers attacking A site and we're going to have two defenders defending A site. The only trick is that the attackers are not going to be allowed to use their abilities. Reason being, I want you guys to focus on your counter strafing and your jiggle peeking when you're going for those aggressive peeks. Got it? So remember, if they're taking those fights against you guys and they're forcing those fights, how can we gather that information and kind of understand where they're setting up without actually committing too hard? You know, using those jiggle peaks. Uh, on the right side. Okay, they have an uh, alarm bot and, and I, don't know, I don't know if it's an alarm bot, it's a nano spam and a slow. Really good idea with the alarm bot right there, you were just a little bit too slow on it. If you see that you and your teammate are both gonna be peeking the same angle, one of you should have your gun out. One should be jiggle peeking for that information, so if they start getting shot at, they can swing back into cover. But if you see that your teammate is that is doing that, you keep your gun out and you get Turn ready to counter strafe right? off of that contact. Flawless. Nice. All right, guys, that was a great drill. I just want to look at something real quick. So we're going to bring up uh, round four right now. We see that we Viper is heading over towards A short here. And since Viper is heading on over towards A short, she's pretty much going to be alone because both of her teammates are also are very committal over towards A long right now. Now, the defenders don't know that. However, as you guys will soon see, there's going to be an alarm bot that will go off over towards A long, or sorry, towards A short right here. And when you the defenders have that information of one or potentially multiple players being over at that area, they still end up going for a jiggle peek or actually for a counter strafe i believe which ends up costing their life so alarm bot goes down killjoy ends up swinging even though the information was already there jiggle peeking is to get is to get information right so when we already have the information through agent utility we don't necessarily need to go and challenge that fight when you have the information that a player is there and you know that your teammate isn't going to be able to help you you don't need to try and go for that peek right there instead play it a little bit safer and make sure like hey call out to your teammate there's one player over towards here and i gathered that information without even having to go for a jiggle peek or for a counter strafe great job today working on counter strafing and jiggle peeking so let's put some of those skills to use I wouldn't be a great teacher if I let you go without some homework. Work on your movement skills such as counter strafing and jiggle peeking and try to implement it as much as possible. Oh, Haven, this is literally what we were hey. just on, guys. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lock in sight. Blinding. Cover going out. Stunning, stunning. Stunning, stunning. Enemies. One back sight. Still in sight. Help bomb, 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 bomb. She's out, she's out, she's out. Reloading? Reloading. Last player standing. I hit her 141, man. Things you hate to see. 
Alright, get ready, uh, put the gear. I'll flash, flash, and then get ready to jiggle. Flash. I blinded you, bad flash. Right there. Did we play first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dead. Last season. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Six AP. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Reach, reach, flash, B. Right side. Watch your C long, we don't have a C long trip. Are we going B? Where are we going by the way? We can go work A again. And have watch. Nice. One more heaven. One more heaven. Blinding high. Out one, out one, out one. One enemy remaining. I'm juggling one. I'm hiding, I'm hiding, I'm full hiding. No time, no time, no time. Dragon, dragon, dragon. I'm running, I'm running. Okay! 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 okay. Dude, the counter strafing dude? Kind of. We're on to something. Waru is not our flash is in short. What? 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 Uh, uh, no, no, I could have played well. Nice try. And much better than last game. And the classes are working. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone, I know there was a lot more stuff that we talked about today, but here are the main things that you need to remember. If you realize that your plan isn't working, don't be afraid to rotate. And then lastly, make sure that if you don't know what to do, the spike is king. So my expectations coming into today's session were to kind of iron out the fundamentals of my game. Not really if I can click more heads, but rather if I can be at the right place at the right time. Counter strafing has always been a tough issue for me. I've always struggled with that, and I feel like Renox has helped really, really shine through in my play. I learned a lot about how to synergize more with my team and how to use abilities to clear out corners. In addition to technical skills like jiggle peeking and counter strafing, I think that I can implement those into my gameplay in the future and use that to climb up in rank. For next session, some things I want to improve on are kind of just doing everything more cohesively with my team and making sure all of my ability hand timings and peaking timings align with what my team is doing to ensure that we can get the trade off or that they can successfully enter sites and we can take sites. All right, everyone, thank you for attending class today, but be sure not to forget your homework. Class in session, dismissed. Let's talk about communication and round-to-round -round decision making. The more time that you spend calling things out, the less attention everyone has to spend to looking at their mini-maps. The more time they have to look at their crosshair, the more likely they are to win those duels. Y'all been a blind for you, Ruin? Left or right? Ooh, oh, hey. Hey. Okay. Let's go.